Uh, can we start with, first of all, with where Turkish engine industry is? Because PD-170 yes. is the word. Yes. It's flying with Aksungur. Yes. And indigenous TS-1400 yes. is flying with Gökbeng. Yes. So where are we right now? Uh, two, three years ago, we were not able to speak about Turkish engines on the aircrafts, on aircraft, on aviation. Yes. So where are we? Uh, I think like uh, the Turkish uh, aircraft industry, if you consider Tur Turkish uh, aviation industry, uh, in engines part, uh, we uh, passed the threshold, technological threshold, that we can succeed and fly. And uh, like a couple of weeks ago, as you know, uh, our TS-1400 engines uh, gave power and uh, fly Gökbey helicopter. Uh, that was a, a breaking point in Turkish aviation history. I, I call it a breaking point because uh, for the first time in our history, uh, our jet engines, not piston engines, piston engines we have done it earlier, our uh, jet uh, turbine uh, engines uh, that we designed, we developed, we manufactured, uh, assembled and tested, uh, gave power a uh, Turkish design helicopter and uh, we were able to uh, successfully complete a manned flight. Yes, the manned, manned flight, flight is a critical, exactly. Uh, if it was uh, like a UAV uh, unmanned flight, we could have flown this uh, engine way earlier because it's a manned flight. It is subject to a lot of uh, airworthiness evaluation. The uh, certificates that, exactly. that are not required in unmanned exactly. aviation. Uh, for example, in this helicopter program, uh, before, uh, before flight, of course, uh, the platform owner, uh, TAI, Turkish Aerospace, they have their own flight security board and airworthiness evaluation uh, is conducted so they approved the test results and success of the engine before they approved for flight manned flight but even before we delivered the engine to them we completed a long series of tests that all they also requested certain tests to be added in this program they would like to see it before we ship the engine so we completed all those tests and after the test our own engineering board we also have a uh, uh, flight wardeness uh, kind of a uh, board. Mm -hmm. We have a board that evaluated the test results and performance of the engine and gave uh, approval for a manned flight before we ship the engine to our customer, Turkish Aerospace. When we talk about T-129 attack helicopter yes. and Gökbey helicopter, they are they both have similar power engines, similar yes. horsepower engine, but they are not the same exactly. engines. This one is indigenous, while the other one is American In English import. Yes. Uh, uh, joint. Joint product. venture, yes. So what is the main difference between those two engines? Actually, uh, our engine, first of all, has about 100 horsepower more. It's uh, more horsepower, mm -hmm. uh, bigger power engine. It is because of the fact that during the contract, government uh, increased the requirements. Mm -hmm. Like when we, when we are uh, de signing the contract, they wanted higher power. Uh, when, whatever the weight, when they are using the current uh, import engines, uh, they wanted to boost the power to a higher level. That's number one. Number at the same altitude that we're talking about. Yes, yes. Okay. For example. For takeoff, uh, the uh, original uh, requirement was uh, like sustained continuous power, max continuous power. Uh, the import engine is uh, 1,292 okay. horsepower, 1,292 horsepower. And this engine, uh, 1,411 horsepower. There's a big difference. There is, there is some good difference. Uh, this is so because the uh, government ask us hot and high per higher performance, especially at high altitudes and hot, uh, under hot conditions. conditions. That's called hot and high, yes. which is really putting a lot of strain on the engine 
and you have to make the engine more capable, uh, more powerful to be able to deliver that. So can you put this engine into T129? Okay. Does that, it that's, fit there? That's the other question. Initially, uh, we were given an envelope for Gökbey mm -hmm. that when we designed it, our gearbox, uh, oil tank and all those systems, they were in front of the engine and the engine was sucking the air from the side. From the right side. Yes, from, from, the from, sides. from the sides and uh, uh, exhausting from the back. But uh, because uh, it became obvious that uh, because of the delays in starting the engine development program, which took some while before we agreed and signed, officially we started in 2017 in March. Okay. So because, uh, but helicopter program started way early, early. five years early. Yes. Because of the delays starting the engine program, it became obvious that the very first national engines will not be in time ready to fly the first helicopters. Therefore, they had to select an interim helicopter engine, which they selected attack helicopter engine because uh, they already buy it and use it in attack helicopter. They just, they also decided to use them in Gökbey helicopter. So because of that constraint, we had to change the design and bring the accessories to the site just like the uh, competitor engine, attack helicopter, so that we can put it in the same place. Right. It wasn't like this in the very first design. Right. We had to update the design, change it and bring the accessories to the site so that we can put it in the same place. So as of now, with this design, we can uh, completely replace uh, Elastic engine mm -hmm. uh, in attack helicopter yes. or Gökpey yes, Gök, yes. helicopter. We can completely take it out and put this in, and it's going to fit in. Right, it fits in, but as a performance, there are other FADEC uh, problems. FADEC. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. FADEC problems. So, uh, can we put this engine into a military helicopter? Because when we were talking, it was said that it will be used as the civilian helicopters at the beginning? Actually, uh, we developed this engine as dual-use engine, mm. both civil and military, so dual-use dual engine. Uh, and FADAC is designed like that too. FADAC is our design again. We design everything from ground to the hardware and software, everything included. Okay. Uh, and uh, we design it such that we communicate the engines both engines communicate each other. Mm -hmm. They also communicate the uh, platform uh, pilot mm -hmm. uh, software. Uh, so uh, we have no problem with this. We have completed all of these. And when we integrate it into a new prop platform, since we have written the code, we can uh, rewrite uh, the interface, whatever the requirements with the new platform, and we can adapt the FADAC to this new platform. So TS-1400, can be used in the future at future T129 attack helicopters. Can uh, one, you say that? 129, there may be some contractual problems because it's a jointly developed yes. helicopter. And uh, as far as I know, the engine side belongs to the uh, company abroad. Yes. So I am not sure. But physically, it can. Uh, but uh, I suspect uh, Turkish Aerospace. Uh, was developing another uh, T629. Yes. It's a completely national version of attack helicopter. Yes. I think uh, they may try to use it in that uh, helicopter. helicopter rather than attack because of the contractual problems. Okay. So Besides, it is up to them. Okay. Besides the turboshaft heli engines, there are the turbofan heli engines that you are producing yes. with 6,000 6, and 10,000 versions. versions. Uh, the 6,000 is dry. As far as I understand, 10,000 is wet. Is wet. Actually, every company OEM they have different naming conventions. Mm -hmm. uh, some companies they only give the names with the thrust uh, at the sea level at uh, standard conditions, dry. Right. So we would, we rather uh, we opted for uh, max uh, thrust uh, again under sea level uh, static conditions, uh, but. Uh, for example, uh, uh, TF-6000 versus TF-10000, uh, it will not be the same engine. 6000 will have no afterburner. Okay. And 10000 will have right. afterburner. 
So we opted for the max power the engine can deliver. So we treat them as different engines because they will be used as different engines. But only difference will be the uh, the afterburner or the, the inside with the core will be. There will be some other minor differences as well. Minor. The same core will be used, but uh, when you add an afterburner, there are some changes you have to make Before because you have, like uh, intake. Yes, there are other things you have. Fadeac also. Yes. So where will you? you where, where are we at the moment for the 6,000 and 10,000? Are they completed or at the tests? Or uh, 6,000, we will finish and uh, ignite the first uh, 6,000. Right. Then uh, we will do the uh, afterburner version 10,000 later. Uh, since they share the same core, we are right now we are building the core. It's under uh, manufacturing process right now. Mm -hmm. uh, our goal is to ignite uh, TF6000, the very first prototype, before this year ends. Before the 2023 ends? Yes, you, you yes. Our goal is the uh, first engine to test. Right. Uh, and where do you plan to install it? Uh, TF6000 uh, version, right now, uh, it looks like with the 10,000, uh, when we talk to the potential customers. Initially, they were thinking like, okay, 6,000 is enough. Mm -hmm. But now, when they have seen the 10,000 version, uh, they say, okay, it's well, better well. to have the 10,000 version. So it depends on the uh, demand and supply. If you don't have an immediate demand for, uh, demand for 6,000, uh, it looks like we're gonna uh, use the 10,000 version first. Uh, so the 6,000 version, we are still going ahead. Uh, prototyping and testing uh, because we need to test our core uh, and it is cheaper of course to make so than uh, 10,000. 6,000 will be a development and demo technology demonstration Ver it, will become. In, it will be initially like that if there's a customer we can complete that and deliver it as a full engine too. And where do you, who do you think could be the customer for uh, 10,000? 10,000 the potentially right now, uh, uh, it looks like Baikar, Kızıl Elma is a good candidate. Mm -hmm. They are right now using a Ukrainian engine. Yes. And the other potential customers, very immediate one is uh, Ankad number three. Right. As, as you know, the Delta Wing uh, yes. uh, UAV. So they both use the same uh, similar power range. Actually, our engine is more power than the import engine. Hmm. It's more capable, more powerful. Uh, but uh, in uh, uh, aviation business, more power is always welcome. Yes, but <laughs> could it be powering enough for uh, transonic speeds? Uh, yes. It also depends on the aircraft design. Uh, but the way we design the engine and the velocities, everything, uh, it will be supersonic capable. It will pass this person. It will be supersonic capable engine. So if the aircraft design allows it, uh, our engine will be able to sustain supersonic flight. We are talking about so far about domestic market. Yes. What about the uh, international, international market? market? International market. export is very, very high. I shouldn't give any specific platform names uh, because when I give that, it will identify the countries. but. Uh, UAV market is growing very big, but we see a big potential in the trainer aircraft market too, uh, especially dual engine trainer aircrafts. That may include Hurjet as well. Hurjet is currently single engine version. Uh, we suspect uh, in the future they may uh, develop a dual engine version as well. Yes. And in that case, our engine will be very valuable for them. When you say that for 10,000 uh, weight? No. Yes, yeah, yeah. dual 10,000. Dual, dual 10,000. Yes. To Cur take cur currently, Hurjet is utilizing an engine uh, uh, with uh, 17,000 uh, 17, uh, weight yes. thrust. GE44. Yes, 404, yes. yes. 17,000 weight thrust. With our dual engine, they will reach around 20,000 uh, range weight thrust. For my so do you think that it will be a marine version as well? Because when we talk about that, it's, it needs yes. to Yes, actually, take a those are future from... future applications. Uh, uh, but definitely, uh, small uh, fast boats, uh, military boats, definitely, like all military ships now nowadays in modern technology, they have aerodirective engines. 
So diesel is only used for cruising now, yes. as you know. Yes, but no, no, when I said the aviation, the marine version of aircraft, because when we are talking about oh, okay. fuel usage... Uh, oh, I see. Twin, twin, uh, twin to, to take off from uh, like an aircraft? Yes, aircraft carrier. Yes, yes. All those things are future applications we are considering. Uh, there will be some minor changes in the engine, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there will be like a uh, land use versus uh, naval use uh, versions always possible. Lastly, you mentioned, I was going to ask, but you mentioned for the marine use at the ships. Yes. Because it's just the conversion of the... Uh, yes. Of the it's just part. a power conversion. You, need ju you just need a gearbox. And uh, uh, of course, to be able to use uh, an engine like this, TF6000, in a marine application uh, to drive a ship, uh, you need an extra power stage, yes. uh, free spinning uh, power turbine stage, uh, to uh, give the power to the uh, propeller. So, do you have any domestic project that you you, ha you, you are targeting to provide your uh, engine? Uh, there is one project, like there is a fast uh, hydrogen boat, they mm. call it. Fast uh, attack craft. Fast attack craft. Uh, there's you know, on dry, uh, drawing board right now. Yes. Uh, but I am not sure we'll be in time to, to deliver uh, uh, aeroderivative version of this because our priority is first the flying engines, as you know. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity. Thank you.